Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Congratulations, Doctor. I'd say the test was a complete success. Thank you, thank you. Eddie. Marvelous accomplishment. You're too kind, thanks. I'd like to congratulate you too, Dean Howard. Great show, great. Well, I must admit, it was quite impressive, Colonel. Oh, uh, have you met Henry Barton, Dr. Nielsen's assistant? Delighted to meet you, Professor Barton. I'm sure this is a happy moment in your life. Uh, Dr. Nielsen really put your university on the map this morning, Dean Howard. Well, Colonel, I'd like to think that during our school's long history, we've made many great contributions to our country, and to mankind in general. Of course, of course, it goes without saying. But now, through Dr. Nielsen, you've given us a terrifically powerful atomic bomb that's compact enough to fit into a suitcase. Just think of it, gentlemen. It could literally fit into a small suitcase. Yes, yeah, think of the convenience, especially if you wanted to take an atom bomb with you over the weekend. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think we'd best be going. Dr. Nielsen? See you. Colonel? Dean? Professor? Well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Well, Henry, I thought you left with the rest. I was just going. Oh, well, you're not leaving town, are you? I'm afraid I must. Well, Henry, this is reunion weekend. You'll miss the big basketball game Saturday night. That can't be helped, sir. Well, I, I was saving this as a surprise, but I suppose I better tell you, Jerry North is coming down. Jerry? Jerry's coming here? Yes, accompanied by his wife. And he particularly mentioned how much he's anticipating a reunion with his old roommate, Stuffy Barton. Now you can change your plans, can't you, Stuffy? I mean, Henry. Sorry, sir. I'm afraid that's impossible. Henry, I know you've been working dreadfully hard lately, but uh, you know, it seems to me that a little change of scene will be just about what you need. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Henry. Uh, do get some rest, will you? Certainly not. I want you to store it away for me very carefully. I'll guard it with my life. Good. You know, that's the ball they gave me when I sunk the basket that won the conference title for the old school. Did I ever tell you about the yes, time... Yes, darling, several hundred times. Oh. Universities forever. Dun, 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 dun. Forming bonds we'll never sever. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's beautiful, Jerry. It's simply beautiful. You like it? Mm-hmm. It isn't really the tune, and I, I don't really care for the words, but that tum tum ti tum tum it gives me a feeling of... Pride? No. Nostalgia? 
Well, that's close. The word I had in mind was nausea. Oh, cut it out. Hey, how do you like the old emblem, huh? Oh, no. Oh, what's the matter with it? Well, how are you ever going to get the old emblem off the old suitcase, old boy? Get it off. I just put it on. Good grief, no. Who's it from, darling? I don't know. I'm afraid to open it. Oh, Pooh, give it here. <laughs> it's for you from someone at the college, someone named Barton. Oh, where that stuffy Barton, my old roommate. You remember him? Read it. Stay home, signed Henry Barton. Stay home. Shall I sing a chorus of universities forever while you explain that to me? Oh, oh, oh Stuffy. <laughs> he knows there's nothing in the world that would keep me from coming down there this weekend. But this is just his idea of a gag. It is? For Dean Howard from Henry Barton. It's urgent. Dean Howard. What? And Barton writes that this terrible thing is going to happen at the gymnasium during the big game tomorrow night. You must come here at once. I'm so happy you could come down for the reunion. The Dean has been looking forward to this visit with both of you. <laughs> A team of wild horses couldn't have kept me away. Where is the Dean? He has someone in his study. Oh, someone in the dean's study. Believe me, I spent many an uncomfortable moment in there myself in my day. Were you a bad boy, darling? No, just like all the others, sort of happy-go-lucky. You know, the old school hasn't really changed at all, Pam. It's the same carefree, happy place. Is it? We'll have it organized. He's very short on the dean. I'll be right back. Right. 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 Good day, Mrs. Hyde. Bye. Dean looks kind of worried. Yes, he does. He has me worried, too. Well, it's good to see you again. Dean Jerry, Howard. Pam. Uh, you uh, got my letter, the one about the room? Uh, the room? Yes, my, my old room in the dormitory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's available. I oh, have the good. key here someplace. Mary, those are your car keys. Oh, here. Thanks. It's, uh... Is there something wrong? No, no. It's just a little problem we have to solve, and, uh... Now, Jerry, you and Pam must not be alarmed. Oh, not even a ten-point tech lead could alarm me. I'm full of confidence. Say, tell me, where is old Stuffy? I mean, uh, Professor Barton, my old roommate. I'm dying to see him. Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. I don't understand. Uh, he's here, isn't he? Well, uh, Professor Barton is no longer a member of the faculty. Stuffy's been fired? No, no, no. Well, let's say he's resigned, but... Uh, You'll understand. I, I'm very busy. Will you excuse me? Well, but of course, Dean Howard. I'm sure you're very busy. Uh, well, I'll see you later, Dean. It's all right, Mary. It's all right. Well, this is it. This is very exciting, Jerry. Oh, it's been a long time. figured out. And it's a raw deal. Again, please? Stuffy. Probably got stubborn and flunked some knuckle-headed basketball player. That's just about it. Well, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. They can't push my old pal Stuffy around and get away with it. So this is the room you used to share with him, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Well, the old place hasn't changed much, either. Oh, come now, Jerry. I'll bet you don't even remember what it looked like. Well, now that you mention it, there is one thing in here that's a definite change for the better. What's that? You. <laughs> oh, we led a Spartan life in those days. Well, the pictures are different, but same old wallpaper. Look, 
You can still see the place where a case of beer erupted. Oh, weren't you the gay dogs, though? Mm. What do you know? Look. The same old mirror. Stuffy and I used to scribble messages to each other on the back of it. Look. Well, sure enough. <laughs> well, Jerry, this is an historical monument. Well, you think this is something. Wait till you see our secret passageway. You're kidding. No, I mean it. There's a way of getting in and out of this room without being seen. And uh, we found it mighty convenient after hours. Well, where is it? Right there. If they haven't found it and uh, closed it up, look. Look. See that trap door? Now, all you do is turn this closed, hug. Oh, honey, this is... What, what is this? A gag? I can assure you one thing, Jerry. This is definitely not a gag. Step back, please. You too, Mrs. North. Over there. That's better. If this isn't a gag, what is it? Didn't you get my wire warning you not to come? Yes. While you were about it, you, you might explain that, too. I believe I will, Jerry. I must warn you, both of you, don't make any loud noises or sudden movements, or I'll shoot at once. I mean that. What a reunion. You see, this is all part of a plan. My plan, to save the human race before it blasts itself off the face of the Earth. Well, that's a commendable notion, Stuffy. So far, I'm with you 100%. Oh, well, me too. But how do you propose to go about doing it? Well, you'll see how. Because you disregarded my warning. You're both in the middle of it right now. In the middle of what? Well, it's probably Dean Howard. He's the only one who knows where to reach me. All right. Talk to him. Be careful what you say. Hello? Uh, hello, Jerry. Uh, this is Dean Howard. Uh, first, I want to apologize for being so evasive about Professor Barton. Uh, you see, I had to clear things with Washington before I could really talk to you. Washington? Secret Service? Yes. Now, they feel that Barton may try to contact you, his old roommate. And if he does, you're to communicate with me at once. Yes, but uh, well, what's wrong? Well, Jerry, it sounds incredible, but Barton has managed to fabricate an atomic bomb. A bomb small enough to go in a suitcase. Barton left a note warning us that he would detonate the bomb at the gymnasium at game time tonight, unless we discontinue all further research. Oh, he must be completely off. Well, what shall I do? Well, telephone me at once if he tries to reach you, that's all. Six o'clock. That means we have two hours. Might as well be comfortable. Oh! Bob. What's the matter, Jerry? It's all right. Set to go off at 8 o'clock. Two hours to go. What if your watch is fast? What isn't? You shouldn't be so nervous, Mrs. North. Oh, no, of course not. Silly of me, isn't it? How did you make that thing, Stuffy? I mean, after all, that is it. I know. It isn't something you just knock off on a rainy afternoon. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, it took a long time, Jerry. A long time. Bit by bit, I learned what I had to know, and piece by piece, I gathered what I needed. And you uh, duplicated Dr. Nielsen's bomb? No. Too much of Dr. Nielsen's work was kept secret, even from me. This bomb is my own creation. Congratulations. That is a notable achievement. Well, it is, but... What now? Now... Now I can talk to them in the only language the advocates of atomic diplomacy understand. Now they've got to listen to me. Oh, Stuffy, look. Your plan can't possibly work. No single individual can make the decision you're demanding. We just don't operate like that in this country. Jerry's right. Don't you see that? No, he's wrong. If I, Henry Barton, one scientist working alone, can stop atomic production here, scientists all over the world will follow my lead. One man can't gamble with the fate of a whole nation. It's, it's insane. But groups of men, 
working together for the destruction of the entire world. This you consider perfectly rational. I didn't say that, and I don't believe it. I, I can't buy that, and I can't buy your project. Well, maybe you don't buy it, Jerry. But you're gonna have to sell it. No. No, there's a limit to what you can force a man to do, even with a gun. Supposing the gun is pointing at his wife. You wouldn't. I would. You're gonna carry my final message to Dean Howard and those men from Washington. What's the matter, Stuffy? Nothing, nothing. I'm all right. Sure. And what happens if, if I refuse to act as your spokesman? You won't. Mrs. North is gonna stay right here with me. If they try and rush this house, I'll shoot her at once. Be reasonable, man. They're going to turn you down. They've got to. And you haven't a chance of getting into the field house with that suitcase. Jerry, you must think I'm crazy. Open it. All right, go ahead, open it. Go ahead, it's all right. already in the field house. Set to go off at 8 o'clock sharp. And I suggest you don't dawdle along the way, Jerry. Listen, I'm not leaving you here don't with this Don't waste time talking, darling. I want you to go. One more thing, Jerry. In case they think they can trick me into revealing the location of the bomb. Tell them there are three more bombs. One in Washington, two in New York, set to go off at different times. And I'm the only man in the world who knows how to disarm them. That's the situation, gentlemen. Now we know the whole story. We've heard Mr. Norris' report. Isn't there something you can suggest? There's the possibility he may be bluffing. Yes, but it's a bluff I hate to have to call. Dr. Nielsen. Well, there's always a possibility that he does have the bomb. And so long as it is a possibility... We can't sit here and talk our time away. What's the last word from Washington? They don't have the answer, and neither do I. You've postponed the game time. We're keeping the crowd from entering the field house good enough but we can't possibly evacuate the town and the college within the next hour. Well, even if we could, there's still New York City and Washington. Do we evacuate them? No. Even if we were to sacrifice Mrs. North, which we're not about to do. Assuming we got our hands on Barton alive, how do you reason with a lunatic? Can't you be reasonable? Think of all of the innocent people, women and children, even tiny little babies will be slaughtered. I'm thinking of them. I want the whole world to think of them while there's still, still time. Time. Time's running out. Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, I want to be here. Twelve. Forty-eight minutes left. Barton's the key to the whole situation. There's got to be a way. There is. Come and get oh, him. Oh, Pam. Where's Barton? Tied up on the floor of the room. Suddenly he just keeled over like that. Of course. Radiation fever. Working alone in secret is bound to be exposed. Well, you can diagnose him later. Come on. Where is he? But, but he was right there. He broke loose and got away. We can't be very far. You'd better alert the other men. I us have to get this Geiger counter. It'll show the radioactivity in Barton. Well, where is he? It's a good question. Let's try to find the answer. Wait a minute. Jerry, see you at the game, Stuffy. He's at the field house. He left me this message just like he used to. It's our only lead, but look at the time. We'll never find Barton in the time we have left. Dr. Nielsen, can't you? Geiger counters. Barton's been exposed to radiation. Wouldn't he show up on them? Will it work? 
Well, he should if he's ready. Do you have any more counters? Yes. Would you get them, please? Dean, would you get a hold of Rigo and tell him to send the men over to the field house? Certainly. Thank you. Come on. We'll search the gym first. Okay. Kramer, Hennessy, continue on into section 17. Corey, Rosen, move over into section 25. On the double. Adams! Yes? We got something over here, under the stand. It's close. It's very close. Which way? I think that way. How much time have we? Time to burn. Let's move. Nothing here, just these. Luminous paint. At yeah, the rooting section. They use them for stunts between the halves. We've got to get out of here. The rest of you men out of the building. Fast! Everybody out! Come on, Pam. In there. It's locked. Step back. He's out cold and our time's almost up. There's a bomb. He hit it in there. Can you disarm it? I can only try. Don't touch it, Nielsen. Deal, Jerry. No deal, Stuffy. Huh? There never could be. Just a big hole in the ground when that thing goes off. And the world won't even know why. If that's enough to satisfy you. You've got it made, boy. In other words, I can't save humanity. I might as well save the universe. That's about it, Stuffy. How much time? Two minutes. Just a second, North. How do we know he isn't stalling? You don't. One minute. Fifty seconds. Forty seconds. Thirty seconds. Twenty seconds. Fifteen. Ten. Five seconds. All right, it's harmless. Barton, what about the other bombs in New York and Washington? No other bombs. I was just bluffing. But it could have happened. Gotta make sure it never does happen. Mountain, back to camp. He's in for a set shot. It's good. And State wins 48 to 47. Listen to that crowd go wild. Well, the doctor says Stuffy will probably be all right in time. They're arranging for him to have psychiatric help. Oh, that's wonderful. Good. Hey, what's happening at the game? Oh, it's over. I wrote down the final score. Oh. 47 to 48. Close, wasn't it? Wow, it sure. Yeah, but who won? Who won? Oh, well, there was no, so much wait shouting. Wait, don't. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, Jerry, I'm so ashamed of myself. Now you don't know if we won or if we. I'll read about it in the morning papers. Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by George Blair.
produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning.